All right, guys, this is four gauge OFC. We've got a one foot over here on the power wire, three feet over here on the ground. This is a 150 amp fuse. guys welcome back i thought i would do a video this uh this week um about welsh audio let's talk about a couple of things that you guys might not know about or might would be interested to know about a couple of changes but um first let's talk wa2k uh i have had one come back uh now the truth is that's actually really good that i haven't dealt with this more than I have with as many of them as I've sold. And I'm not acting like I've sold hundreds of these things. But in my opinion, I've sold quite a few of these things right here in the first year. Um, it's been a lot of fun. But I sent one out to Hawaii. Uh, how long ago? A month ago? I can't remember exactly. A few weeks ago. Something like that. thought it was really cool that somebody in Hawaii bought one. But um, that guy had the amp for about one day. And he turned in for a return through eBay. So that amp came back to me. He got a full refund. I tested it when it got home. I was going to be really interested to see. This is not the amp, by the way. I'm going to show you something else with this one. Uh, but to see if it worked, I figured it was probably okay. He just wasn't doing something right. And sure enough, I hooked it up on the test bench. And it was messed up. Now, what bothered me was... I'll never know if he messed it up or if he received a bad amplifier. But of all the amps, we're talking about dozens at this point, um, that have been played or tested or anything, it's the only one out of every one of them that's ever been bad. And not knowing if he received a bad one or he messed it up just bothers me a little bit because I did not test that amp before it went out the door. So... I uh, decided to make some changes, and so going forward uh, from that amp, every single Welsh Audio amplifier is going to get tested before it ships out. So um, I have found a way on the test bench here to make that as quick as possible. I can test a case of them, uh, and it only comes out to be... Uh, I don't know. It's it's relatively a small amount of time to test every single amplifier that goes out the door. So I know for sure people are receiving good working amplifiers. Um, that's a great benefit to the customer. So think about a couple of things. I've sold two of these that went out of the country. Uh, one that went to Scotland and one that went to Poland. When you buy one of these through eBay um, and you're out of the country... Uh, having a warranty is not even an option outside the country. So, you know, having every amplifier tested uh, should give peace of mind to uh, some of these people that are, you know, thinking about buying one outside of the country. So, going forward, every Welsh Audio amplifier is going to get tested before it leaves my house. All right. Um, also... I've got some things for sale on eBay um, under Welsh Audio. It's a great way to support the channel. It's, it may be some items that you need uh, anyway, but to be able to support the channel with relatively low money and get something for your money as well is kind of a win-win if anybody is interested in doing that. I've been able to move quite a few ferals already. Um, these are one alt. Watch my video on these. They fit standard one alt and they also fit two alt welding cable. Um, I will soon have red and black in these. They currently are just all red. Um, four gauge, sold a lot of these. Red and black available in four gauge. This fits standard and oversized four gauge. Uh, eight gauge, I've only sold one or two packs of these. Uh, they are all black for the 8-gauge. They fit 
every eight gauge I've ever tried in them. Uh, and the two aughts, red and black available in the two aughts. Um, make sure you watch my video on these. These fit um, standard two alt as well as oversized one alt. But you're probably going to need to crimp the, the barrel here to get it into your amplifier. So a little bit tricky on these. Um, also, guys, I meet up with a lot of people. Oh, let's let's hold off on that. Let's get to the lugs. I sell um, copper lugs. They are all copper. Four gauge. They fit standard and oversized four gauge. You know, like sky high and, and all the bigger stuff. And same with zeros. Uh, these are nice lugs as well. All copper. They fit standard and oversized um uh, uh, one alt. They'll also fit that two alt welding cable. All right. Also, guys, I meet with a lot of people. I uh, end up seeing a lot of systems. It's kind of crazy. I feel like I could do a, uh, a video on some of these systems or take pictures. Oh man. Um, but I see two common themes with people's systems, and there's a lot of issues. But number one is how they have their amplifier grounded. So this is a four gauge. I've already crimped one of these lugs on there uh, with a hydraulic crimper and put a heat shrink on there. Um, have provided a uh, uh, bolt and nylon locking nut and washer. And so somebody can easily um, have a really good ground to their amplifier. Uh, it's one of the things I see people get wrong all the time. It's crazy. Somebody that's just got little wire. It's barely grounded off on anything. It's got strands hanging out. It's it's kind of crazy. Uh, anyhow, saw a guy one time that had his amplifier grounded. And this was an amp that put out about a thousand watts. Had it grounded to the screw on the six by nine that was in the back. That was how his amplifier was grounded. <laughs> uh, it's just one of many, many examples. Also on the power side of things, um, it's kind of crazy how many people will have a much smaller wire than needed for their amp. And they'll have say like a, it doesn't matter if it's a top post or a side post, how they will just like loosen their post. There goes my dogs. Sorry about that. Um, just loosen that up a little bit, jam a few wires in there, and tighten it back down. Really crazy. So I've got a couple of solutions here uh, because I get it. Uh, it's, it's not easy to have a lug that's properly cramped or I don't know. So somebody that doesn't have the right tools or the right things to do some of this in a nice way um, can be a little bit of a problem. But also power wire here, already got a crimped lug, heat shrink, uh, wire ferrule, and a um, fuse holder ready to go. Now you still need to run the wire from the fuse holder all the way back to the amp. On the ground side, you're good to go. From the amp, drill a hole, um, you got you an excellent ground, much better than what I normally see. So it's not a it's not a perfect situation with a full, you know, amp wiring kit or anything like that. But it is a quick, easy way for somebody to uh, get started with a nicely wired system um, without having to go through a whole lot of trouble. So these, of course, are a little bit more expensive, but some of these things range from what do these range here from? eight dollars to i don't know 15 or something like that but anyhow guys uh i'll put a link in the description for the welsh audio store i'll put a link in the description for the wa2k which will also be in the store but i thought y'all might be interested let me know some feedback i'd love to hear some feedback from you guys about some of the things i discussed here the way people got their stuff wired or any of these components. And then also the WA2K and the fact that they are all gonna go out the door now being tested. 
All right, guys, I thought this would make a great Wednesday upload. Um, got a good Sunday video going for you. Please consider subscribing uh, if you haven't already. We're very active on the channel. We're pumping out one to two videos a week. Um, and thanks to my current subscribers and all the um, comments and support that you guys constantly give week after week. I thank y'all so much. All right, guys, we will see y'all on Sunday. Thanks for watching.